Welcome to yarnspirations.com. My name is Brittany and I teach over at Be Hooked Crochet and I'm here to demonstrate how to crochet the boho bunting. It's a free pattern that's available from yarnspirations.com. Before we get started, you'll need to download your free pattern. You can do so from yarnspirations.com. And we're gonna talk a little bit about organizing the color scheme. Let's do that next. So grab your free pattern and let's dive in. Once you download your free pattern from yarnspirations.com, this is what you're gonna be met with. We have two pages here for the pattern. And the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is the materials list. Now there are a lot of different colors that are used in this bunting and you can use this many. There are nine colors. You can use that many or if you want to keep things a little more simple, you can just use you know, three or four colors. Whatever you choose, the most important thing is that you organize this before you try to dive into the pattern. If you're using the same colors that's listed here in the instructions, you don't have any more work to do. You can just leave it as is. But if you're being a little bit more adventurous and using your own color scheme, then you will need to either on a scrap piece of paper or just right here on the pattern, cross off the colors that you are not using and replace them with the colors that you are using. Once you have your colors organized here in your materials list, they're going to come into play in the instructions right here and when we're crocheting the triangle. So the, these instructions over here. You'll just want to pay attention to how this section is telling you to orient your colors. So you're gonna make seven triangles with color one as A and color two as B. Now I wanna talk about that just a little bit here because over in the material section, we can see that it's given A, B, C, D all the way through I. But then over here, you know, it's, it's bringing in color one and color two. So where is that important? And that's where you'll find it over here in the triangle instruction. So the actual pattern for the triangles that we're crocheting. It's going to tell you with color one, do this. And with color two, do that. But because there's so many different variations, this is how it makes sense to word it on a pattern. So what you'll need to do is just take note of each one of the variants of triangles that you're going to make and match them with the colors in your materials list when you're crocheting them. Once you have all of your colors situated, you know what you're going to do next now we're going to learn how to crochet the triangle first, then we're gonna learn how to join them together, and finally how to make the pom-pom so we can accent each one of those. Well, go ahead and grab your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, color one and color two. We're going to make our first triangle next. Once you have all of your colors arranged and organized and you're ready to start crocheting your triangles, the pattern is the same for all of the, the triangles that you're going to be making. So the pattern itself is the same. The colors, of course, will be different. I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet that now. We're going to start by creating a slip knot. And then you'll just place that loop on your hook. And we're going to chain four. Now these triangles are crocheted from the center outward. So we need to start off with some kind of ring so that way we can start crocheting in the round. So in order to do that, we just need to locate our first chain. So we can see it right here. I'm going to place my hook just directly in the chain. I've caught one of those loops there. Then you'll yarn over, pull through the chain, and then you'll pull through the loop on your hook. Now you have your ring there and we need to work our stitches in the center of that ring. And it's a little bit difficult to find because of course we have a small ring here. So what I like to do is just grab the edges and pull them apart and it looks kind of like a pretzel. So you wanna find that bottom part, that bottom circle. That is the center of the ring. So we have a little hole on the, the side here 
and on the opposite side we want to find the circle below it and what I like to do is just try to stick my fingernail through that just so I have a reference point. Now I'm holding on to that. We're going to chain three and this is going to count as our first double crochet. The granny stitch pattern works in groups of three double crochets so we're going to continue that throughout this entire pattern. This is going to be the first double crochet. So what we need to do is make two more double crochets in the center of the ring. And once you get this first run out of the way, it'll go a lot quicker. It's just a little bit fiddly when you're holding on to something so small. Now we have our first group of three double crochets. And we're working with triangles, so we're going to have three points. To create the point, we're going to chain three. So what we have is one of the three sides, and then we have our point. Now we're going to create the second side by making three double crochets in the center of the ring. So what we have here is our first side, our corner, or our point, and then our other side. So we're going to make another point. So one, two, and three chains. And we'll make three double crochets in the center of the ring. That's going to be the third side. And the last thing we need to do for round one is create the last point, and we'll do that by chaining three. And then we need to close things up. So we'll just find our first chain three. So you can see right here, this was the first chain three that I created. I'm going to locate the very top chain, or that third chain, insert my hook into the chain, and slip stitch. Now it doesn't look like much, but we have a triangle starting to form. That is the end of round one. Let's go ahead and move on to round two. We're going to continue working with color one for round two. We want to start by chaining three, and this is going to count as one of the three double crochets in our group. And what we need to do is kind of work somewhat backwards. We want to make our cluster or our group of double crochets here in this chain. So I'm just going to loop my hook back around into that chain three space and make two more double crochets there. And what we're doing here is we are starting to form the next corner on the second round. So we have one of the groups that we're gonna need for this corner. We're gonna finish this corner up when we come back around. So once you have your two double crochets, we're going to chain one, and then we're gonna jump to the next chain three space, so our next point. What we're going to do here is make three double crochets, And that's our first group. Now what I like to do, because we have a limited amount of space that we're working with, is just grab those stitches and slide them down. Now we'll create another point. So we'll chain three to do that. And then we'll make three double crochets in the same space. So this time around, we are putting two groups of our three double crochets in each of the corners. And that's actually going to be true for the other rounds 
as well. The reason why we're doing that is because we need to increase our number of stitches every single round in order to continue making this piece flat. So if we were just to do the same pattern as we did back in round one, we would sort of end up with like a little cone or a tube. So after you've worked that corner, we're going to chain one and we'll just skip to the next corner and we'll work that the same. We'll make three double crochets. And we'll chain three to make the point. Just slide everything down and make three more double crochets in the same space. Now we'll chain one and we'll find that first corner. So I said we, we started on it right at the beginning and we need to finish things up. So we have our three double crochets. So in order to finish this up, we need to make three more double crochets in that same space. And the last thing we need to do is chain three to create the third point. We'll join with the slip stitch to our third chain so you can see it right here. Just insert your hook into the chain and slip stitch. Now that wraps up round two. As you can see, it is looking a little bit more like a triangle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to color two. So we can go ahead and fasten off color one. So I'm just going to trim a tail and then pull that tail through the loop on my hook. And now we're ready to start round three. Grab color two and we'll get started. To begin round three, we'll grab color two and create a slip knot. And you want to find the place where you fastened off or where you did your slip stitch. Okay, so you're going to just find that third chain. So it looks a little bit different, a little distorted with that slip stitch in there, but you're just going to enter your hook into that chain, then place the new color on your hook. And then just pull that through and we're going to chain three. So of course this chaining of three is counting as a double crochet. One of the little ninja tricks that I like to use when I'm doing a lot of color transitions, here we only have one, but if you can eliminate the need to weave in some ends, that's always a good idea. What I like to do is just steady those two tails in between my two fingers here, and I'll hold them along the work so that I can work my stitches over top of them. And I'll demonstrate that as we go. And then I don't have to weave these in later on. I can just trim them off and be done with it. We're going to begin round three like we did round two. What we're going to do is make two more double crochets in this chain three space. And that's going to work part of the corner. Now what we're going to do for each one of the sides is just slightly different than the last round. And that's because our sides are getting longer as we increase. So we're always going to chain one in between the groups of three when we're not on a corner. So we're not going to work a corner next, so I'm just chaining one. But I'm just going to skip over and work three double crochets in this chain one space. Now again, I have those tails kind of secured on the back and I'm just going to work my hook in the chain space. You can see the two ends there and work three double crochets. Now 
Now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to work a corner next. I'm still working over those tails. We're going to create the corners the same way. We'll do three double crochets, three chains, and three more double crochets in the same space. And now everything from here is just a repeat. We're going to chain one. We'll find that next chain one space. We'll make three double crochets there. Chain one. And work the corner the same. Three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. Now chain one, three double crochets in that next chain one space, chain one, and now we're on the last corner. So we have our three, our first group of three already there, so we're going to make three more double crochets into that space. and we'll chain three and join with a slip stitch to your third chain and that finishes up round three moving on to round four we're going to start the same way so we'll chain three we'll make two more double crochets into this same corner And let's talk about the repeat a little bit. So our sides are longer now, of course, since we've increased. Now we have two sections where we have a chain one space. Anytime you see a chain one space, you're just going to put three double crochets there. Okay, so that's not a point. And in between them, you're going to make one chain. So really the only time you're gonna have three chains is when you're working the three points. So that's an easy way to remember things. So I've made my first chain. Then I will double crochet three times into that chain one space. I'll chain one, three double crochets in the next. chain one and now I'm on a corner so on the corners you'll make three double crochets chain three and three double crochets Now go ahead and repeat that for the side that we're on and the last side. And we'll meet back up at the end of the round here. I'll show you one more time how to finish off round four. Now when you come back around to your very last 
point, you're still going to chain one after that last group of three, and you'll work three double crochets in the last chain three space. chain three and join with a slip stitch to the third chain. Now we're almost ready, we just have one more round to complete our triangle. To begin round five, we're going to chain three, work two double crochets in that same chain three space, And the rest is very much a repeat. We're just making the same pattern of stitches here. Here, of course, we have three chain one spaces. So we know how to treat those. We're going to chain one, work three double crochets, chain one, Find the next space and put three double crochets there. Chain one, find the next, three double crochets. Now chain one and we're at a point, so we're going to make three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, all in the same space. Now just go ahead and repeat what we've just covered here for the first side for the remaining two sides. We'll meet back up at the end of the round and we'll talk about what to do next. So at the end of the round I've made my three double crochets in that last chain three space. I'm chaining three to create the last point and then join with a slip stitch to the third chain. And that finishes our triangle. So what we'll do from here is we'll fasten off and there's a couple of finishing touches you'll need to do. Now your triangle probably looks a little wonky and let's be honest mine does too. That's perfectly normal when we're crocheting motifs. What we need to do is block them. Now you can do what I'm doing here which is finger blocking. So I'm just stretching them out at each one of the points and really trying to relax the stitches and sort of force it in the position and the shape that I want it to be in. Now this will get you pretty far, but there is one other thing you can do to make it even neater. I'll pull some of those in the frame here as well in just a moment. That's wet blocking. Wet blocking is really one of the, the best things you can do for your finished crochet. It's going to give you the, the cleanest and the most professional look. To wet block your project, the main idea is that you are, it, it's the same, you're, you're stretching everything out into the shape that you want it in, but you're pinning it into place and you're saturating it with water and you're letting it air dry overnight. Now I do have a a very in-depth tutorial about blocking and you can learn about wet blocking and, and I'll show you how to do that. You can find that tutorial at behookedcrochet.com slash block your project. I would highly recommend that. Once you have all of your triangles made, so you'll follow the instructions as we talked about earlier, this particular pattern calls for 56 triangles. So you can crochet that many if you're creating a bunting that size, but you know there is some flexibility with this pattern. If you want to make a shorter bunting or a longer one, you can make more or less triangles. Once you have all of your triangles made, you have them blocked, 
Now, the next step I'm going to demonstrate is how to seam them together. What I have here is a stack of triangles that have already been blocked. Now, I was talking a little bit about blocking and how great it is. You can really see the difference here. You, you can just see how much nicer and cleaner these triangles look. So again, if you haven't tried wet blocking, I really, really recommend that you do so. So what we're going to do is stitch these together. So what I have done is I've just sort of created a little color pattern. So I have all of these different colors to work with and I'm repeating them the same, but you can change things up and just join them however you think looks best. I'm going to set those aside. We'll start on the first one and you're going to grab color I. This is going to be the color that you use only for joining. So on each side of the bunting we're going to chain 20. This is just going to give us a little bit of string or you know a, a chain to tie things up with so we can fasten it on to the wall or wherever we're going to be using this, the fireplace. Now once we have our chain 20, we're just going to leave it just as it is and we're going to pick up and start working along the top edge of our first triangle. We're going to locate our first corner and with the chain just on your hook still, insert your hook into that chain 3 space, yarn over and pull up a loop and we're going to be working with single crochet stitches. So we're just going to yarn over and pull through two. Now what we need to do from here is make one single crochet into every double crochet in every chain space. So I'm going to find my first double crochet here and single crochet into that stitch and into the next and the last. So I'll have a three there. Then a chain one space is next. So I'll single crochet into the chain one space and just repeat that. One single crochet into every double crochet and one single crochet into every chain space. And when you get to the last corner, you'll just make a single crochet into that chain space and grab your next triangle and make a single crochet into the point of that next triangle. And then you'll repeat that. So one single crochet into every double crochet and one single crochet into every chain space. And you're going to repeat this for all of your triangles until they are all joined together. Now there is just one little finishing touch that I want to demonstrate and that is the pom-pom. So every one of the triangles have a pom-pom on the very bottom and I use a really nifty tool to make my pom-pom. So let's talk about that next. So I like to use these pom-pom makers for any any time I make a pom-pom. It is so much cleaner and so much easier. But you know, using them can, you know, if you've never done it before, it it's not really very user-friendly initially at first. But once you know how to use it, they're really easy to make. So you're just going to open up one side and grab your yarn. Now you can probably see this in the pictures for the pattern, but what you're going to do is the color that's in the center of the triangle, that's going to be the pom-pom color. So I just steady the tail 
just right on the bottom. And then you're going to just wrap it around the section that's, you know, kind of like a half circle. And you want to wrap it so that it's really thick. If you don't wrap enough, then your pom-pom will just look really strange and it doesn't really stay together that well either. And once you have it pretty thick, you have it wrapped pretty thick, just like this, you want to end with your working yarn coming out towards the front. And then we can close this section and then we'll open up the next. So I'm just keeping some tension on this so I don't lose my wraps and then just continue. So you'll just continue wrapping your yarn around this new little side in the same way and try to keep your, your wraps consistent. So I mean, you obviously don't have to count the number of times that you're wrapping this around, but you want the thickness to be similar to the other side. And when you're finished wrapping, then you can close this up and make sure this stays closed throughout the rest of the pom-pom making. So you're gonna take some scissors, they need to be pretty sharp, and you're just gonna trim along this little ridge here. So you do that on one side and then rotate it and do that for the other side. Okay. And when you have that done, you can, I'm just gonna trim off where it's attached to the ball of yarn and then Cut yourself a tail. I usually go way longer than I actually need to, but around eight to 10 inches or so. And you'll just place the, the middle of that strand on one side. So just like that, and you'll just slide it down in, turn it upside down and tie a knot. So you wanna pull this really tight, as tight as you can without breaking the yarn and you'll go ahead and double or triple knot it. Once you have that secure, then you can release the pom-pom maker. So you'll pull that side up, you'll pull the opposite side up as well, and then you'll just pull the two sides apart. Now you have your, your pom-pom, and what I really like about these pom-pom makers is that the pom-poms look really good already when they first come out of the maker. Sometimes you'll need to trim up a few, like a few straggler little pieces, and that's no big deal. You can just do that over a trash can. And now I'm gonna show you how to attach them to your granny triangles. So here is my little piece. You can actually wait and do this at the very end once you have all of them attached. But I have my purple palm to match the center of this first triangle. And I'm just going to, you can probably use your crochet hook, it might make it a little bit easier for you. I'm going to just insert my hook into the chain space, the bottom point, just so I can pull it through. You could do that with your fingers if you wanted to. And once you have that, you have your two edges, or your two pieces there, and you'll just tie them in a knot as tight as you can. And then once you have that secure, then you can just trim this the same length as the pieces in your pom-pom. So then it's just kind of concealed that way. Now, once you crochet all of your triangles together, you add all of your pom-poms, then your bunting is complete. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and allowing me to teach you how to crochet the boho bunting from Yarn Inspirations. And also a big thanks to Yarn Inspirations for allowing me the opportunity to do so. Now, once again, my name is Brittany and I teach and run the website behind Be Hooked Crochet, a YouTube channel and crochet community that's all about just teaching you how 
to do what I love to do most, and that's crochet. Now, if you liked my teaching style here, you might also want to check out my website, BeHookedCrochet.com, where you'll find hundreds of other crochet tutorials. You'll also find some knitting tutorials and a podcast, a crochet podcast that is well on its way to being a fan favorite after its debut only a few months ago. Now, Your Inspirations has a lot of really great projects planned for you in the future. I hope you'll keep an eye on that and also look out for future tutorials where I'm demonstrating you how to crochet their amazing free patterns. <music>